Here are four strategies for getting the nourishment you need without getting eaten by a crocodile in Africa. Our first contestant is the yellow-billed stork. That bill isn't just a deadly accurate way to fish. Once the stork catches the fish, it uses the bill to juggle the fish. So the fish will relax those spiny appendages, making for a much more enjoyable meal. The crocs don't bother the storks. The storks are too fast and probably, I don't know, too bony. I mean, not enough meat on those bones. But here we have a heron with a tasty seafood buffet in its beak. And it's being stalked by this crocodile, or its meal is. The heron is near the water to wet the fish, so it will slide down its throat. The croc is waiting for just the right moment to spook the heron into dropping the fish, so the croc can gobble it up himself. In the end, the heron makes it all too easy. How about that? Let's move on to African bee eaters. These birds also have to figure out how to stay fed and hydrated without becoming croc chow. Here's the croc getting into position like an outfielder waiting for a fly ball. The thirsty birds hover, trying to find the one square inch of water that's safe. Gob, close, but no cigar. Here's the peanut gallery, waiting for the next match. And here is the next match. Oh, so close. But I guess you'd call that the crocodile equivalent of an air ball. Finally, a bird called a quilia. These huge flocks seem to interest our crocodile quite a bit. Does the croc want a meal or just a thrill? Now it looks like he wants a little of both. The quilias take a victory lap around the lake and decide to give the croc one more chance. Crocs typically hunt using the element of surprise. They do not chase their prey. Oh, he bags one. One out of, what, 5,000? Still, the croc showed the world it's still got lightning reflexes and an overbite that won't quit. <laughs>